Jane Pauley is one of the most respected and beloved personalities in television. Starting with the Today Show in the 1970s and through to her current role as host of the hugely popular CBS Sunday Morning, Jane epitomizes heart, sincerity, and important storytelling. She joins us from New York, where she is recovering from an injury that did not allow her to be here in person. Ladies and gentlemen, the inimitable Jane Polly. Hi, Jane. See, you know, you and Bob Costas have the same apartment. I know. You know what? Bob is is right over there. He's just, <laughs> he hangs out. We come, you know, every Sunday night, we come over, Bob's my place, his place, whatever. Yeah. You know, Bob's still here. We're just... We're just hanging out. I'm serious. I could turn the, he's, he's right over there. I was here listening to uh, Bob's story. And I was glad to see the cutaway of your gorgeous audience. I, I, I mean, I saw all of you there. Well, can, and we, as can, you we know, show, can we show Jane the yeah. audience and how everybody appreciates yeah. you? Yeah, and there hi, everybody. There you see? go. Yeah, well, that's, this is, um, that's for you. And that's double for, I hear my little feedback from uh, myself saying that, but I'm so, so disappointed that I couldn't be, be there with you. And, and the fact that I couldn't say I'm so disappointed I could be there with you uh, as smoothly as I, I normally do is um, I, 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 I've had some screws knocked loose. <laughs> and uh, I ran into something um, uh, of, of considerable weight that was uh, affixed to a wall in the basement of a theater. Uh, uh, almost two weeks ago, and I learned today from my boss, who was there at the time and saw me make the collision. Actually, I think he heard the collision because oh, it boy. was quite impressive. But but he pointed out to me today that it had been painted bright red. <laughs> it's a, a painted bright red thing, uh, as if to say, uh, "Lady, don't connect your head to this thing." Uh, so, <laughs> But, uh, but too late, and uh, um, I'm going to be fine. I, I, I will be fine, uh, but I'm not as fine now as I was two weeks ago, and um, I'm a little self-conscious that um, uh, some of the syllables, are, or if I, uh, vocabulary words, if I come to a place in the middle of a sentence, I'm going to alert Bob Costas over there. <laughs> he's got words. He's got words he's not even using right now. <laughs> So Bob's going to cover Good. for me, right, Good. Bob? Right. And well, he's only got the best words, he tells me. All the best words. Well, mm -hmm. first of all, I want to I tell the audience that Jane, both Jane and Bob were scheduled to, to be here. And in Jane's case, I learned about this uh, about, you know, a little less than two weeks ago. And, and Jane was doing everything to come here. And she said, Mitch, I, I, I don't know. She sent me a text. I banged my head and I got concussed and I have a concussion, um, so I don't know, am I allowed to go or whatever? And, and so, being a sports guy, I said, well, yeah, you know, it depends on the concussion. You go into the booth and they, if they, they let you come out, you fly back home with the team. So he said, so Jane said, okay, all right, then I'll, I'll soldier on, I'll be there. I may need some help at the airport to, you know, get into a, you know, a, a transport or something, but I'll be there. And then uh, the next day, um, her husband, Gary Trudeau, who happens to write a, a, you know, this little comic thing called Doonesbury, yeah. Um, he calls me up and he's so humble, and both of them are, and he says, um, hi, Mitch, this is Gary Trudeau. I'm, I'm, I'm Jane Pauly's husband. I said, yeah, I, I have a vague idea where you are <laughs> and who you are. And he said, um, I don't think Jane told you the whole story. She had a brain bleed, and she's really not supposed to be on an airplane going. I said, oh my God, okay, stop, stop. And so we canceled the airplane idea, and then Jane said, you know, well, could they put the camera in the house, and she's kind enough. So you're getting, while you're not getting a chance to see Jane in person, we are getting to see her couch and her mirror. Uh, and what a lovely couch and mirror they are there, Jane, yeah. Yeah, Very I can nice. get the cat over here too if you wanted the cat. Yeah, if you get the cat, sure, you can work yeah. it all in. Now you're you're a Midwesterner at heart, right? You grew up in you grew up in Indiana. Oh, totally. I'm from Indianapolis. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I'm five generations Hoosier, both sides. I don't know how much that counts in Detroit, but um, yeah. Well, it's better than being a New Yorker. 
<laughs> and not well. I grew up on East New York Street in Indianapolis. Oh, so, so you're the, a the joke is I'm a native New Yorker. Ha ha ha! But the uh, only reason it's a joke is because I'm so Indianapolis. <laughs> well, you uh, you certainly understand uh, the Midwestern ethic, and uh, you, you brought, I thought, a lot of it to your career throughout the I many many incarnations. I understand it. I am it. You are it exactly, mm -hmm. and you embody it. And uh, Jane and I met when Jane came out to do what would end up being, I think, the first piece that you did for uh, CBS Sunday Morning, right? The, the, the very first story, Mitch, yes. Yeah, and I apparently did not ruin your career because you now host didn't the program. Didn't hurt me none. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't hurt each other none, I guess. Yeah. How do you like the, uh, of all, you know, you did the Today Show, obviously, you did the Evening News, you know, I think the second female anchor ever on, on an evening news program in America, and, uh, and then you, now you host the CBS Sunday Morning, which is, a wonderful, I mean, talk about a dedicated audience to that show. Um, you see, they're yeah. even here. Um, what's different about that particular job versus the ones that you've held before? Um, it is, it's uh, it, 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 eclectic. It is uh, 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 the product of a particular vision that uh, was created by uh, a guy named Shad Northshield and Charles Kuralt. Uh, you'll remember a lot of people in your audience will still have a picture of Charles Kuralt sitting on his uh, uh, stool there on Sunday morning. Their vision has pretty much remained true in the now 40 years of uh, Sunday morning. It's a thoughtful, intelligent program. Uh, it's curious. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's good spirited. And it's on Sunday morning, <laughs> which is <laughs> kind of a thing. Yeah. Uh, I am the um, the third the third host. Uh, Charles Carroll was there for 15 or so years. Charles Osgood, 22. Um, uh, Charles Pauly, who is me, uh, call me Charlie. Um, I've now been there as a host for two <laughs> years. But it's the best. Um, it, you know, here's the deal. Uh, the Today Show, Dateline. Uh, I briefly had a, a daytime show that people tend to gloss over, I think, because A, they don't remember it, or B, they think I'll be embarrassed by it. <laughs> but I've, I've never done a show I didn't uh, like and admire. People will stop me and they would say, Jane, I love you on the, on the Today Show, or sometimes Joan, <laughs> <laughs> or Diane, I love, not primetime, love, great show. Yeah. Uh, when I'm stopped now, it's Sunday morning, is my favorite show, or it's the best show on television. It's one or the other. That's what people say. They stop me to say, it's my favorite show, or it's the best show on television. And in all my uh, decades of doing pretty darn good uh, programs, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear it's the best show, it's my favorite show. And, and a program like that has earned a, earned a reputation, kind of like have Mitch. <laughs> no, uh, far, shoot higher, <laughs> but, but thank you for that. Um, I, we were asking people here uh, to talk about somebody who influenced them in, in their lives uh, significantly, changed the path of their life. Who might that be for you? Wow, I was sitting here uh, listening to Bob Costas talk about his dad and uh, just found that so remarkably uh, moving. Uh, my my dad actually was the guy mowing the lawn on Saturday. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and I guess one of the things that I most respected about my father and my parents uh, were their just uh, uh, Dick and Mary Pauly ordinariness, uh, their good neighborliness, uh, good citizens, uh, uh, church-going you know, people uh, that uh, salt of the earth um, with you know, issues. So, but they, they, that doesn't lend themselves to the kind of great stories that Bob uh, was able to tell. Uh, I guess the, the person that made the most uh, impact on my life, that actually set me on a course, uh, would have been a, a high school speech and debate coach who, who appeared in my life uh, about a week after the student body at Warren Central High School there on the east side of Indianapolis uh, decided that I would not be a varsity cheerleader. 
Mm. And oh, I know that had been my plan. That had been my only plan. And uh, when <laughs> that didn't uh, happen, and I my uh, red and swollen eyes, uh, I met uh, uh, the uh, uh, Harry Wilfong, who was the uh, coach of the biggest and best speech and debate program in Indiana. And I went to a, a working class school. I don't know why our school had a speech and debate program that would have been the envy of any school in the country, uh, but we did. And uh, uh, Uncle Harry, as he would be called by um, all of us, uh, when he got his beads on you, his beams on you, he wouldn't let go. And what he, he, he recognized something in me uh, that nobody else apparently had noticed, <laughs> mostly including myself. And, uh, and then he added ambition, his, not mine, and discipline, his, not mine. So, I mean, I came into uh, the world uh, with, with, with some, I guess, talent and ability, but if you don't have an ambition and you don't have discipline, you're not going anywhere with it. So Uncle Harry uh, decided that I was going to be his champion and that I was going places, but it was only going to happen if I was disciplined about it. So he, he imposed that. And I became successful. At the age of 17, I had an idea about myself uh, that, um, that I could be a success. If you plant that idea about yourself, it, it, you know, it, 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 it's going to change you. It's going to raise your expectations. It's going to make you actually a little ambitious and maybe a little more committed to, 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 to doing things than... I, I didn't come into the world with the kind of grit uh, that he imposed. But now, that's, gosh, that's 50 years ago. It's a long time ago that that well, but, happened. Yeah. And, and now, I think, you start, if I'm going to live any longer, I kind of, either, either I'm going to be that person for someone else, I'm going to turn myself around and be uh, a Harry Wilfong influence and make a difference in someone else's life, or uh, I might have a spark lit to inspire me to become something other, something more than 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 a person with the real that that you showed. Uh, you know, the, your your questions inspire a person to think. Well, then, what are you going to do with all that? all that good stuff you've had, all that opportunity you've had, are you going to squander it or just or didn't, you know, and enjoy thinking about how it was? Or, or are you going to be like Mitch Album and just keep making a difference in people's lives? Uh, that, uh, that. Well, thank you, Jay. You... you you make a difference in everybody's life. You're extremely kind. I know this was a tough circumstance to do. Jane has, by the way, participated in our uh, Say Detroit Radiothon every single year. Uh, she never fails, and she always says to me, do you want, we'll fly some people in. They can come see the CBS Sunday Morning Show. That in and of itself is an incredible offer and an expensive offer. But then Jane says, and then they can come to brunch with me, and we can have brunch together. And for the last three or four years, People have done that from Detroit, and they've bid on that thing, and, and have, have not just gotten a chance to meet. And that, that most people, you know, do that. Yeah, but we will shake hands in the hallway. Jane takes them to brunch because that's what Midwesterners do. You know, that's how we treat people. So, before I let you go, Jane, you asked me uh, when we spoke. You said, uh, "Remind me," because my memory might, you know, be a little shaky at the moment. But you said you wanted to make some kind of challenge. For to sure. our audience here, so yeah. I'm reminding you. Well, um, I mean, I'm kind of devoted to Detroit in, in, in a way that preceded you, Mitch. Uh, I don't know, I believe in Detroit. I just am a fan of Detroit. I, I, I root for Detroit and, um, and always have. It's, it's sort of personal. And 
uh, you uh, embody all the good things that I would like to uh, see happen for Detroit so that if I, if I wrote a big uh, a check for you uh, instead of showing up tonight, um, if, if, what do you say, uh, we, and my husband, has, we've ta Gary and I have talked about this, so he's not going to fall over. <laughs> uh, but if we wrote a check for $25,000, do you think anyone in your audience could match that tonight? Um, for you. Wow. Well, I don't know about anyone, but maybe any ones. If That's we uh, we actually have an opportunity a little later in the show, uh, it, well, back in about ten minutes actually, uh, to challenge us. So, is if that's a gauntlet smash, then yeah. we'll see uh, if we can do that. I, I promise to honestly report back if we match it or if we don't. Uh, I'll tell you the truth. Because uh, if that's, you don't, the deal's off. The <laughs> deal's off if we don't. Okay. No. Well, that's a Midwestern deal. Okay. It's not, it's not uh, well, please thank Gary uh, for me, and, uh, and, and, and please, I'm so glad that we didn't get you on an airplane, because I never would have forgiven myself, I didn't know. So please thank Gary, uh, and we thank you for letting us invade your home. We'll take that gauntlet challenge of a $25,000 raise, and we'll see if possibly we can do that later on. Meanwhile, on behalf of everybody who's sitting here at the Opera House, Jane, I know you would be here if you physically could. I want to thank you for taking time to believe in our causes and help us out. Jane Paul. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.